Hello and welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangia. Chief Justice of India, Justice N.V. Ramana, has launched Faster, which is fast and secured transmission of electronic records. This is a digital platform which will communicate interim orders, stay orders, bail orders of Supreme Court to the authorities concerned electronically. We might like to remember that last year uh, there was a delay in releasing prisoners for up to three days because it was said that they didn't receive the communication. In today's day and age, it was shocking to hear such a news. And then, of course, Chief Justice of India, Justice Ramana, also took the matter into his hands and they had consultation with Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, Senior Advocate Dushan Dave, and a report was made and then all of this happened. A lot of people were involved, but finally we've seen this thing come to light, which is from our point of view, a big transformation because until last year, it could take up to three days for an order to get transmitted to the prison. So I will leave uh, my today's panel to explain the rest. They know much better on this issue. May I welcome senior advocate Pinky Anand. She has served as the additional solicitor general of India. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, may I welcome Nandini Gore, senior partner, Karanjawala and Company, uh, one of India's leading litigation law firms. Welcome, ma'am, and good to see you again after a long time. Uh, May I welcome Advocate Abhimanyu Bhandari, practices at the Delhi High Court, Supreme Court, and also takes up arbitration cases in India and in London. Welcome, Abhimanyu. Uh, may I welcome Shravant Shankar, he's managing partner of Rao and Shankar, and an advocate. He argues at the Supreme Court of India and the Delhi High Court. Also, if I'm not wrong, you also argue in Telangana. Uh, welcome, uh, Shravant. May I also welcome Advocate Kushbu Jain. She practices in the Bombay High Court, the Delhi High Court and the Supreme Court. Uh, looking forward to some interesting interventions from you, Kushbu. Uh, first of all, may I request uh, Senior Advocate Pinky Anand to lay the ground for this topic and then we move ahead with a round of introductory comments. Ma'am, uh, your opening comment. Uh, two things, Tarun, actually. If you look at the large, uh, you know, panapibi of what's going on in life and particularly in the courts, I do find that we've actually been heading very fast forward into this entire regime of providing enough infrastructure and digitalization. So we've seen during COVID times in any case an immense expansion of all the digital facilities. Now The whole idea is to fast forward the justice delivery system. And in that light, if you look at it, you also find that overall we are having the digital system ready. Of course, you come into physical um, appearances so as of today as we speak. Um, and I have seen uh, Tarun so many times in life that you actually have so much delay in this entire transmission of the orders that are passed by the court. So firstly, we've had now orders being available generally, uh, court orders, judicial orders, which are now available on the NIC platform and therefore available to everybody. So not only lawyers, but even uh, clients and people who are of the public who want access to the system have it. Let us talk about the criminal justice system or stay orders and interim orders. Now, what happens is in our country, we really have great substantial laws, substantive laws, substantial laws. In every manner, we have perfected ourselves and actually transformed ourselves into a very modern society. But the implementation of them, the execution of them. So the execution process is what we are talking about today. The faster delivery system deals with ultimately stay orders, interim orders and bail orders. Imagine the plight of a prisoner who's actually sitting, has got bail from the court, and we've seen it happening, by the way. It, and the worst scenario is if it is over a weekend. If it is on a Friday evening, and ultimately you have got orders, sometimes the orders are not made available. Where they are made available, they are not transmitted. The communication of the same. So to first get the bail order, have the same ready, third communication. So this entire process of facilitating the transmission of those orders to the authorities in criminal matters and bail matters in particular, and including in civil matters where there are interim orders passed, for example, attachment of properties. And today, Tarun, as we speak, bankruptcy laws, insolvency laws, uh, economic laws, these have come into their own. And ultimately, you need protection so that you cannot have dissipation of assets of people while the matter is still being adjudicated upon in Point. maybe possibly lengthy proceedings. So, I, I mean, there's nothing much to be said excepting to say greatest thing that can happen, make available justice speedily. And this is the execution part of it. We have other parts to talk about also, which is also being worked upon. In fact, uh, while we speak, today the criminal amendment bill was introduced in the Lok Sabha and ultimately leading again to digitalization. 
incidentally the whole provision digitalization as in uh, scientific evidence which is available in scientific tools of investigation so the whole process i think we are transforming our society into delivering justice within the parameters of the current modern day scientific world with all the equipment softwares electronics telecom and each of these facilities put together so provision of this i think the chief justice is stepping everything fast forward not only calling it faster but stepping it all fast forward thank thank you for that opening comment i'll go to uh... Advocate uh, Nandini Gore, she is uh, senior partner, Karanja Valan Company. Ma'am, your opening comment. So I will take uh, from where Pinky Man Madam has left. So Chief Justice rightly said that we are still looking at the skies for pigeon to deliver our, you know, orders. So in a, a, a recent case of Aryan Khan only, I will tell you. See what Ma'am is saying that we have a speedy system. We have laws at properly placed. but every state also have their own you know uh, uh, rules and regulations so uh, in aryan's case what happened that the warrant of release was there but it was sent to the arthur road jail but because of certain problems he was he was released the next day so what we have to do is we have to see that all the states are at uniformity system is properly done this faster is a very good thing and finally what i can say is at every state our supreme court is coming for rescue may it be pollution control laws may it be mining laws may it be speedy delivery of the system i remember when i joined the profession we used to go to the registry stand there for 3 3 days to get a copy of the certified copy of the order not only for criminal matters but you know landlord tenant some house is vacated and the person is running from pillar to post but now we have come far very very far because of the technology advancement but what i feel is for example in this particular matter only uh, many of the state when the chief justice issued notice so four state arunachal pradesh nagaland assam and mizoram they said that we don't have any internet uh, infrastructure in our state and it will take us a lot of time and we need money and resources to do it so the system it is is at place the chief justice is trying his level best but the states also have to cooperate the state judicial system also has to cooperate and another most important thing tarun is this that uh, we are doing this technological advancement everything is fine but what about the people who are sitting in the jail the police officers and the staff who are there are they adequately trained that is my take okay thanks thanks so much for that introductory comment i'll go to abhupet abhimanyu bandari for his opening comment so my opening comment is i think that this is a really really great thing that has happened i think this app is just this pro this software faster is just a stepping stone to much better things um there is a lot of learning i think a lot of learning that we have had in technology in the court system during the covid period and let me tell you tarun today now suddenly everyone is agreeing that the virtual mode has ensured that lawyers from all around the country can participate in supreme court hearings so therefore you know to make tech using technology to ensure that supreme court truly becomes a national court i think is a is a great move ahead and and things like this like this so, uh, the faster mechanism by, by which people can get you know certified copies of the orders immediately uh, video conferencing i think will really ensure that people from all over the country can effectively participate in in the adjudicatory process Uh, in the supreme court and supreme court becomes more of a national court and i hope that systems like faster which are coming up are adopted by courts all over the country even by the trial courts so that we do away with uh, standing in queues applying for certified copies of orders while our clients are languishing in jail not withstanding the court bail thanks for that opening comment advocate shravan shankar your opening comment uh thank you tarun for calling me to your show so uh tarun the name itself which says fast and secure transmission of electronic records clearly indicates that it is not a transmission from supreme court but also to supreme court so this is a platform where the orders are sent instantly directly and securely to jail authorities primarily district courts and high courts so there are about some six seven categories of matters which are generally considered urgent which are taken up in vacation or you can even ask for a house motion where an interim order is necessary urgently so 
briefly seven categories are death penalty matters habeas corpus petitions demolition of property matters dispossession and eviction matters where matters relating to violation of human rights matters of public importance and mostly uh, bail and anticipatory bail matters where you know we we used to have uh, experiences where we used to run to get interim uh, orders in anticipatory bail matters where the accused is absconding and we don't want the accused to get arrested apprehended before the matter is heard and once you get an interim order we used to run to get the registry order certified copy from the registry and also get the order uploaded on the website from the nic department sometimes when you turn around to the police authority with an interim order much before they could imagine they will not trust they think it's a forged document so they go up and check it up from the registry so this is this is something which is revolutionizing the entire communication system wherein also supreme court in many occasions requests the trial courts to send the records of the entire proceedings before the trial court where electronically they can be scanned and transmitted from the trial court to high court so it's a very wide platform and in fact i remember when this uh, particular issue happened where about 13 prisoners who were uh, declared juvenile by the juvenile justice board they were in uh, uh, they were in custody for over 20 years so these guys were actually lodged in the agra jail which is less than 4 hours and less than 400 kilometers away though they were actually released for four days later which kind of astounded the court because it was reported in a news channel and thereafter it was taken up suvo moto and all of this has come up thanks thanks for sharing that perspective advocate shavan shankar i'll go to advocate kushbu jain for her opening comment much has already been said by all the earlier eminent panelists over here so i'll just add a few whereas opening comments is concerned see one aspect is delay in the release of convicts uh, uh, even after granting of the bail or on the grounds of non receipt the other aspect which which was been said by my earlier speaker was the non verification of the judicial orders and there has been instances of tampering with the orders so so this aspect of non verification is also been very much covered by this this uh, uh, the new technology which we're talking about fast you know for this purpose they are talking about authentication of all such orders and records of proceedings that will bear a digital signature of authorized nodal officer of the supreme court as well as there would be a institutional digital signature both are accepted under the information technology act as as a valid 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 thing so this is one aspect which will have that at least there would not be any kind of tampering and non authentication of because of the non verification the trust level was very much less uh, uh, whereas uh, even despite you know there have been instances where order has been passed we communicate that order has been passed there is a there's an anticipatory bail order or there is a bail order but still it was it was it's it's both the sides uh, either they would wait because they want to verify it's not properly verified or the second there is a delay so because both the things are been very very well covered by this uh, new technology which we're talking about and that's a, that's a welcome move you see another aspect is which they are talking about which we should also expect that in the second phase of this this entire thing all the things will be able to all the we, we're not just talking about orders but entire record should be transmitted through online mode or through through digital mode and there should not be any need for sharing of a hard copies altogether because any kind of matters that come from the lower court to the high court to the supreme court we wait for the authentic copies to come from from the court and things should happen so that also is a lot of a delay whereas whereas uh, our justice system is concerned whereas whereas matters pendency of the matters is concerned so i think both the moves are very good whereas uh, uh, speeding up uh, uh, the judicial system okay point well taken but i'll read out a paragraph from what our chief justice of india justice ramanna said we took up a su moto case and thereafter then wrote in justice am khanbilkar and justice dy chandrachud justice hemant gupta and others orders passed by the supreme court and the other high courts have to be transmitted safely without tinkering by third parties that's a very interesting comment made by the chief justice of india without tinkering by third parties and if if it also says that 73 nodal officers have been nominated at various levels all notice, nodal officers have been connected through a specific judicial communication network by creating a secure pathway for instantaneous transmission of orders now all this is very interesting simply because we didn't have it in the private sector we have so much technology in india but in government it all seems very new i'll go to uh, ma'am pinky anand for her comment uh, you're right in a sense if the technology is available the question was to actually interpose this in the judicial platforms and that has been done by this method uh, frankly we've seen the worst of times i mean growing up in the profession as one has for several decades by now 
if we seen the delay as i said earlier is the part of execution and having a prisoner in jail or a convict in jail for even one more day than necessary yes, when he yes. has been granted bail and whether it is aryan khan or anybody khan or yeah. any other non khan the point is you cannot be behind bars it is the worst uh, possible tragedy that can befall anybody if an order is passed court has held your entitled yet because of the transmission systems and believe me the kind of speed that this will ensure see again and nandini will support this you seen seen some part of it you actually wait outside the court shavan just talked about it you actually go to the court master first for signatures so you have to ensure that an order has been passed let's say a friday evening it's a very typical criminal scenario by the way but very very interesting point and i also want to get in advocate nandini gore on this it took email came to india sometime in the late part of the uh, 1990s this common email from 96 97 a lot of people had it of course late 80s also but 92 onwards but in india 96 onwards largely so we are talking of a time lag of more than 25 years before we could adopt this uh, uh, i'll want to get uh, if if ma'am pinky anand has a comment then uh, advocate nandini got it just one comment i have it needs visionaries to put vision into perspective okay okay advocate nandini gore from karanjawal and company yeah so tarun i will just add you said that 73 nodal officers are appointed as well as 1187 email ids are created you know to transfer uh, trans, uh, transfer this uh, whatever the orders passed by the supreme court now uh, i will take you back uh, i will be completing 28 years in the profession now in the big name when we used to have a matter either from chandigarh or jabalpur or somewhere and some criminal lawyer has sent us a matter uh, we used to call him telephonically and tell him aapke uh, matter mein bail ho gaya okay madam send us the recording letter now we will send a recording letter then he'll say send us a order then we will go to the registry and uh, stand there for 2 3 hours and if god forbid it's a friday then you will get the order on uh, monday morning and there were also cases uh, why i am stating this is because you said the chief justice very interestingly said about tinkering by the third party you know i know some of the cases where the local lawyer never used to inform the relatives of the uh, you know person who is languishing in the jail for so that his peace is not given so he will not inform them so look at the technology at that time and now we can directly transmit the court will directly send them order to the court authorities the court authorities will immediately inform them and these people can be released they need not to wait because it is not only about the aryan khan case you know in the delhi riot case also the miss natasha marwal she was the delhi high court passed the order but there also after 3 days she was released then this comedian Mun- uh, munawwar farooqi i don't remember his exact name that case also the same thing happened so don't talk about that era talk about the present situation so things are going to change drastically now okay, point point well taken i'll go to advocate abhimanyu bhandari see you practiced in london you practice in india it took justice nv ramanna justice chandrachud and others and it took this time and so many years to happen do you think finally we are picking up pace as far as changes are concerned in the judiciary uh, like frankly after justice ramana came in appointment started to happen now even these changes the arbitration center in hyderabad i mean you think finally things are picking up pace i think things are not picking up pace i think they're going in a supersonic way and i think it's extremely inspirational it is extremely good to see such good changes and also comparing it to another jurisdiction let me tell you what we as a judicial system what supreme court and other high courts as judicial system have achieved in the last 2 years i don't think so any other jurisdiction could have been achieved because the kind of volumes that we deal with it's not just one person who's getting bail in a day in delhi high court there are hundreds of people getting bail in 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 delhi high court and other high courts in supreme court so the way we picked up the whole information you know how the whole virtual online system during the covid time yes, yes. it was a necessity and the way supreme court came to the rescue i think it is absolutely phenomenal and i hope that this is just a stepping stone you know coming to the point that uh, uh, ms gore was making uh, you know the issue of that you know the relatives she she made a very important point and the point was many times relatives don't know that an order has been passed by the court and i think that this app this whole system that has come up 
anybody could get the order in a secured way now with the invention of the qr code as you are aware tarun anyone can get a document they can scan the qr code with their own iphone camera or whatever camera they have in their phone and that can be authenticated by directly taking them to the website of the supreme court and saying yes this is an authentic document and this is what the document reads like so actually one could have a certified copy of the order in everyone's mobile device and i think that's absolutely revolutionary i'm sure that this is a stepping stone which will only make things much better as time passes thanks uh, thanks for that comment uh, advocate shravan shankar for example you argue a matter in the supreme court and it takes 3 days for the order to reach uh, your client who's in some other jail in the country do you think that the pace of change has increased at least now we can see tangible change in the judiciary in the sense how they are modernizing or do you think it's a fallout of the corona learnings that we have via the uh, the 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 e court system the digital court system that we have seen a uh, tarun in fact it's a laudable step it goes hand in hand in digital reach covid times has revolutionized how the judicial system is working it has forced them into uh, using internet facilities and also onto the remotest possible areas but all of this is happening should also happen as a form of uh, resolution it should happen evolutionarily not as a revolution because there are a lot of challenges in this people can hack into systems you could get some prisoners released by uh, if someone uh, uh, hacks into your system there, there is a lot of risks involved uh, in all of this but the challenges uh, further are you need to perhaps maybe amend amend the rules in the state jail authorities also the state courts as well for them to accept these transmission records so digital system has its own pros and cons cons being like when we uh, started off uh, after a few months people started singing in court people started interrupting in court people have asked, actually started playing to the gallery because you are under watched by your clients so you have to ensure that every point is put forth so these are all the difficulty so there are pros and cons it should happen as a form of evolution and we every step has to be taken with utmost care and i'm sure in this case we have taken utmost care but we have to keep our fingers crossed as to how this gets executed point 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 well taken kushbu uh, the chief justice of india said that he hoped that in future in the second phase of this project supreme court will be able to transmit all records through this system and we won't need hard copies at all do you think that's easier said than done or do you think that will happen see that will happen we have seen the way uh, things are changing and the way uh, we have moved towards technology though covid has forced us uh, uh, when he were talking about we are we have lacked where is technology or adopting of technology is concerned and especially where is judicial system is concerned not just by by thoughts but also with a lot of a uh, lot of issues as to as to adopting of technology the second aspect came is security of documents because what we talk about here is uh, very confidential documents uh, in case it goes uh, in wrong hand or hacking happens or anything happens plus uh, securing of documents whereas these documents should not move out of india it should be in the jurisdiction of india even your official official act also talk about so there were a lot of aspects which are which are there which has to be covered but we have moved pandemic has forced us to move literally uh, you know no nobody has thought over that we would have hearings online all the courts right from trial courts to the supreme court would move online and that would be so speedy and so smooth so yes i'm i'm very much hopeful that this will and yes as rightly said by the earlier speaker that this is nothing but a stepping stone and it it's it's high time that we should adopt the technology and as pinky ma'am was talking about that it uh, needs a, a, a you know a, a proper revolutionized thinker to bring in change so i think let's hope for proper change to come in uh, in the near future thanks so much uh, for all these inputs see uh, today's episode was in a way to thank the court for the step that they have taken come to think of it had their bench not done this would anybody have said anything i don't think so uh, but uh, the chief justice of india justice nv ramana and the other judges justice chandrachud and others they took it upon themselves uh, solicitor general tushar mehta and finally things moved so this is something that should be lauded i mean these small steps lead to big changes we all, we all were in a sense appreciating in the past days all lawyers in fact i spoke to was appreciating the uh, digital court system i hope that continue uh, but i would like to thank uh, senior advocate pinky anand uh, advocate nandini gore from karanjawala and company advocate abhimanyu bhandari uh, advocate shravan shankar 
एडवोकेट खुशबू जैन फॉर मेकिंग टाइम फॉर दिस शो एंड शेयरिंग योर व्यूज एंड शेयरिंग अ वर्ड ऑफ एनकरेजमेंट फॉर सच पॉजिटिव थिंग्स थैंक यू सो वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू For more such videos subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel hit the bell icon